Hello, thanks for taking a few minutes of your day to spend time with Kai and myself. We would like to introduce you to the fabrication techniques for the DVS. So sit down and relax and Kai and I will get started. The following materials and tools are needed. The plaster cast, the DVS piston dummy, the DVS housing, and the plaster rectification tools. So, one of the simpler things about the DVS is that it requires no special plaster casting technique. You can use whichever technique you are comfortable with. What's really important if you're using a total surface weight bearing rectification technique is to do no reduction in circumference and length at the distal end. The shape and the dimension of the distal cap have to be kept, otherwise pressure sensations at the residual limb might occur. The reduction in circumference Excluding the distal area depends on the shape of the residual limb and the quality of the soft tissues. It is important that you flatten the bottom of the cast to receive the piston dummy to prepare it in the proper position. You want the DVS unit to be in the longitudinal axis in both planes. This is going to receive the very center of the distal end of the DVS liner when the patient dons the prostheses. We will use 12 millimeter thick thermal and stiff to thermoform. You will need the following materials and tools. The DVS piston dummy, the valve, the DVS units, plasta band, a 99B25 nylon, and these hand tools. Now Kai will demonstrate preparation and fabrication of the check socket. Anchor the piston dummy loosely with a screw. Take a thin nylon stockinette and put it over the top of the plaster model and the piston dummy. Then take a small thread and tie off the nylon stockinette underneath the piston dummy and around the screw. Trim off all the excess nylon stockinette to expose the piston dummy. Finish securing the piston dummy to the plaster model. Please take the silicone dummy provided in the DVS kit and put it over the piston dummy. This will create a seal for draping your plastic and make it easy to blow the check socket off the model. Now you need to prepare the DVS pump. Take plasta band and wrap around circumferentially. This will help create a seal with the thermal and stiff material. Then add two strips each along the anterior and posterior axes. This will make it easier to remove the cylinder after the trial fitting. Place the DVS pump on the piston dummy. Note that the orientation of the valve is on the medial aspect. Take the valve dummy and screw it in place. Take more plastiband and cover the valve dummy. When using the 4R220 pump, also cover the cap screws with a small piece of plasta band. Now drape as you normally would. You will need the following materials and tools. The components that are included in the DVS kit, including silicone bonding agent, hand tools, and optionally, the Autobach Betasil. Follow these next steps to remove the plastic check socket from the plaster model. Cut through the plastic according to your trim lines. Grind the surface over the valve dummy to just expose the slot for the screwdriver. 
remove the dummy, and apply compressed air through the remaining hole. This will pop the check socket off the plaster model. Remove the piston dummy from the plaster model. Close the opening in the piston dummy with plaster band or tape and insert it into the cylinder. This will keep the cylinder clean while sanding the contours of the socket. Screw in the valve dummy. To prepare the distal end of the DVS socket to receive the components, the surface is ground flat to expose the top of the cap screws. Important is to grind until just contacting the metal of the cap screws. Next, remove the valve dummies. Next, you will insert the snap bushings. The snap bushings are slightly conical, so the ring you see on one end needs to be inserted first. Apply a silicone bonding agent on the outside of the snap bushings to ensure an airtight socket. Using the small tube of grease provided with the DVS pump kit, apply a thin layer to the inside of the DVS pump housing as shown. In addition, apply grease to the two O-rings on the valve housing. Be careful to get no grease on the duckbill valve and insert as shown. Screw the valve bushing into the DVS housing tight enough to make a seal. To finish the assembly, insert the piston into the housing. Now take the fixation ring and tighten in the cylinder with the wrench provided. Notice the piston is down. In order to raise the piston to an acceptable place for donning, insert the liner, hear the snap connection to the piston, and pull the liner out. This pulls the piston up. Now you need to apply the spacer plate and attach componentry so that the rest of the prostheses can be assembled. For the DVS, many prosthetic foot options are available. For this end user, a trius foot has been chosen based on his medical history. Add the foot with the necessary components and continue with bench, static, and dynamic alignment as you normally would. Before sending the end user home, make sure your socket is secured with Celicast, components are secured with Loctite, and set to torque specifications. When using the non-weight bearing 4R220 equals one pump, you need to attach the appropriate socket adapter, such as the tech plate. The following materials and tools are needed. For lamination, we need the standard um, tape and PVA bag, carbon fibers, and the different layup materials. Please see the IFU for a complete list with part numbers. Using a transfer apparatus, transfer the adjustments made to the check socket to the plaster model. 
This will guarantee that you have the same alignment with the definitive socket. Modify the plaster model where necessary in preparation for laminating the definitive socket. At this point, we've prepared the plaster model for laminating the DVS socket. The piston dummy has been secured onto the plaster model the same way as when preparing the plaster model for draping the check socket. Prepare a PVA bag and stretch it over the plaster model. Using thread, tie the PVA bag off in the narrow portion of the piston dummy as shown here. Using a scalpel, cut away any excess PVA bag just above the thread. Fix the PVA bag distally and secure the seal by cutting away excess PVA and taping it in place around the vacuum tube. Place the silicone ring over the piston dummy. Prepare the DVS housing by inserting and tightening the cap screws, isolating them with wax, and filling them with plastiband. Place the DVS pump on the piston dummy. Note that the orientation of the valve is on the medial aspect. Insert the valve dummy and screw it in place. Remember to only insert the valve dummy after the pump is in place. In this way, you will avoid an air pocket being captured in the lamination. Place plastiband in the valve dummy slot as you did when draping the thermoplastic check socket. Check your vacuum and then pull a double layer of Perlon stockinette over the model. Tie the stockinette off around the DVS pump. Also, tie around the valve dummy and secure tightly. Expose the valve dummy using a scalpel. Now you're ready to complete the layup, including carbon fiber. Laminate per the IFU or use your personal layup to finish the DVS socket. When fabricating the DVS with the non-weight bearing unit, part number 4R220 equals 1, to create a good seal on the inner side of the socket, use 5 millimeter thick PETG when thermoforming. Prepare your plaster model and the DVS housing as you did when draping the check socket. Drape as you normally would. Make sure to lightly sand the outer surface of the socket. This will ensure good adhesion of the final lamination. Assemble the prostheses in the transfer apparatus. Fix the lamination plate to the PETG before doing your lamination. Please note that you have two valve dummies, a short one and a long one. The short valve dummy should be used when using a sealing resin and talcum powder mixture to fix the socket to the rest of the prostheses as shown. The long valve dummy should be used when using hard foam to secure the socket. This may be the case when the alignment is extremely offset. Now you can proceed with laminating. The following tools and materials are needed. The liner, the definitive sockets, the grease, the valve and the duct bill, the fixation ring and the piston. Cap screws have been removed. Silicone bonding agent has been applied to the snap bushings before they were inserted. 
Using the small tube of grease provided in the DVS pump kit, apply a thin layer to the inside of the DVS pump housing as shown. In addition, apply grease to the two O-rings on the valve housing. Be careful to get no grease on the duckbill valve and insert as shown. Then screw the valve bushing into the DVS housing tight enough to make a seal. To finish the assembly, insert the piston into the housing. Now take the fixation ring and tighten in the cylinder with the wrench provided. Notice the piston is down. In order to raise the piston to an acceptable place for donning, insert the liner, hear the snap connection to the piston, and pull the liner out. This pulls the piston up. Next step is to assemble the definitive prostheses. Kai and I would like to thank you for your attention to this DVS video. We are very pleased that you took the time to accompany us and we wish you the best going forward with your DVS fittings.